right, so good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Valentine's Day. Um, my thought for you that I've been playing with the last couple of days is on the chakra that is right beneath the heart chakra. So if you didn't know, you have a little second chakra that sits right underneath the heart chakra, and it is the space where we have the Ananda Kanda, so the wish fulfilling tree, literally translates as the roots of bliss. Right? And so within you, there is this place that says that anything that you've ever desired, anything that you've ever wanted to feel or be or know or do is already there. Right? And so we go to that place or it's suggested that we go to that place when there's this feeling that we're running around outside trying to find what's going to complete us. Right? If we're running around trying to find something that's going to make us feel the way that we want to feel or that's going to make us feel like our life is what it should be or any of that. We're asked to redirect, to go back to that place that says, how can you fulfill your own deepest desires? So eyes closed for a moment. And bringing the awareness or the attention to that space of the heart, but don't go there and sit, right? I want you to actually feel your breath as it flows up and down the spine, the inhaling, feeling the breath flowing up to the crown, the exhaling, feeling the breath flowing down to the tail. So follow that for a moment, inhaling, finding the breath, rising up from below all the way up to the crown of the head. And the exhale, finding the breath flying down the spine all the way down to the base, to the tail. And so you can feel the upward flow. And you can feel the downward flow. And there's a place right in the middle of that where you can catch where the flow is going up and going down at the same time. So you're finding that feeling of the flow of the breath up, the flow of the breath down, and the place where they interchange, where they mix, where they become combined is the heart. So put your attention on the heart center as that. Your inhale and your exhale become just breath. And where your feelings of up and down and right and left mm -hmm. become just here. And then from that space that is your heart center, can you drop your attention just a little bit lower? And there you can imagine any way that you'd like the image of a tree they say a tree that has jeweled leaves. So a tree that sparkles. And from that tree, you can imagine that the roots spread just like the nerves in your nervous system or just like all of the blood vessels that run throughout your body is that those nerves spread or those roots spread all throughout the entirety, every corner of you, those roots are touching. And so sitting in front of that tree, make a wish, acknowledge a desire, and then make an offering. Because in order to have those deepest desires fulfilled, it's not that we have to do the right things, but we have to be willing to give something of ourselves to it. So your offering can be your devotion, it can be your love, it can be all of that type of thing, or you can offer what you think is the messiest part of you, the darkest part of you, the scariest part of you, the worst part of you. Because what we're doing in that space of the heart is we're taking these things that we have separated and made opposite and we're bringing them back to one. And this is what it means to love in that unconditional way, that there's nothing that gets left behind. So the deepest desires of your heart, you feed them with everything. So add your shadows, add your grief, add your sad, add your everything. And those roots that are bliss, again, they spread through every corner. So whatever you offer becomes fuel for that inner desire to become manifested, to become embodied, to become true. Not tomorrow, but right now.
you're sitting in front of that tree, make a wish and then make an offering. And then that becomes your mental focus or that becomes the place where all of the energies of you, all of your prana begins to wrap around whatever that desire is. Bless you. And this is what we call opening the heart, right? Not just throwing it open for no reason, but opening it to the possibilities, opening it to that experience of unconditional love where you don't leave anything out. If you can do it with you, you can do it with others. It's not the other way around. I learn through others and then maybe I do it for myself. One more deep breath in. And then exhaling, you can let that imagery go if you'd like or hang on to it in the back of your mind. And hands come together in front of the heart, palm to palm. We'll open with the sound of Om. Deep breath in. Let the eyes float open. Nice, you guys, you can release the hands, please. Bring your hands to the front of the knees or the thighs. Just start to circle your torso. Nice big spirals. Good. We think about, right, Valentine's Day is the tradition that we have is that you're, of course, you're giving and receiving, that's the idea. And the exchange of that, that transaction kind of aspect of loving ourselves or loving each other gets in the way often of that feeling of just feeling loved. So the experience of it, the unconditional form, that's what the heart does really well because it takes all things that are in flux or that are in motion, seeming like they're opposites and it unifies them. That's the energy of the heart chakra as all things become unified, all opposites become unified. Move your torso the other direction, please. So I've been thinking of it as like doing it backwards that whoever you would give a Valentine's to or whoever you would like to express your, your love to or your affection or whatever it is that you're expressing, hoping that they're going to give something back in return, give it to yourself first. Give exactly what you're asking for to yourself first. And then see what inspires you or what comes out of you that you want to gift to someone else. Go ahead, come back to center, please. Stretch the arms up alongside the ears. Interlace your fingers, press heels of the hands up to the sky. Good. Big, deep inhale. Then as you exhale, bring the arms forward, push back through your ribs, around into your rib cage. Good. Dropping the chin towards the chest. And then inhaling, taking the arms up alongside your ears, get super tall, ribs in. And then exhale, bring the arms forward again, round into the back of the ribs. Good, and then inhale the arms up one more time. And exhale, arms forward one more time, round. Press out through the hands, push out through the back of the rib cage. Good, and then come back up to center, please. Release the hands out and down to the floor. Good, do a little, just for a moment, rolling of your neck. Good, and go the other way. Nice, and then come back to stillness, please, and bring yourself forward onto hands and knees. Good, and come into downward facing dog, tuck your toes, lift your hips. Beautiful, pedal the feet just a little bit. Nice, letting the hips sway from side to side. Good, and then come to stillness. Nice job. Right leg comes up and back behind you, down dog split, slide it up into that split position. Good, and then step that foot forward between the hands, lunge. 
Nice, both hands come inside the front foot. Good, walk just a little bit towards that upper left hand corner, please, and start to make big circles with that hip. Good. Nice, so I've been telling the story, of course, about how Kama, right, the yogic form of Cupid, if you wanna call him that, finds himself in the position of losing his physical body. <laughs> So how it goes, right, is that Kama, who is this representation of desire more than anything else, he's a representation of desire, not necessarily love, but desire, things that we, you know, excite us and that pull us to them and that we feel that we're attached to, right, all of that. But he's got this whole imagery, right, is that he shoots the arrows and all of that and it awakens desire in us. Come back to stillness, please. Good, drop that back knee down to the floor. Use a blanket there if you'd like. Inhale both arms to the sky, Anjaneyasana. Squeeze the front heel and the back knee towards each other. Good, and then bring your hands to your heart center. And as you do, lift your chest up towards your thumbs, pull those lower armpits back. So it's like you're squeezing your elbows or pushing your elbows wide, but then push into your hands at the same time. So you feel this awakening of your shoulders. Good, and then draw your belly in, draw your ribs in and start to lift your chest even taller. Good, and then start to turn your sternum up towards the ceiling like you're coming into a back bend, but keep pulling your armpits back and keep pressing those hands together. Good, drop the chin slightly, but lift your collarbones, lift your sternum. Good, and then let your pelvis move forward, but pull your belly back. Good, one more deep breath, back bending with no arms extended. Good, and then stretch the arms all the way up, please. Deep breath in, get tall through your side body and then release the hands down to the floor. Nice job. Lift the back knee, please. Step your left foot forward just a little bit. Take both legs to straight, Parsvottanasana. Use blocks underneath the hands if you'd like. Good. Nice, you guys. Bend the front knee, please. So as you bend the front knee, you come out of that locked position a little bit. Send your outer left hip spinning forward a little more and then scoop your belly so that that right side gets a little bit more lift. Good, and now press into your feet and pull your hips back and up to straighten that front thigh again. Good, and then bend the knee again, move back into the, uh, almost the warrior one position. Send that outer left hip spinning forward. Good, scooping the belly, and then send your legs back to straight. Pull your hips back and up, press through the big toe mound of that front foot. Good, again, bend the knee, drop into that forward action. Pull the right low belly up and wide, left hip spins forward, and then straighten that thigh again. Press through the big toe mound and relax your upper spine, forward fold. Good. Nice, you guys. The first way that you come into a pose is not always the best way or the most open way or the most free way. Okay, we're meant to mess around in these postures. <laughs> So don't just come into it and be like, ah, this is how it hurts. And this is how it's always going to hurt. Move yourself. One more breath. Squeeze those feet towards each other, please. Good. And then take your hands to your hips. Come all the way up to stand. Beautiful. Reach back behind you. Interlace your fingers at the low spine. Good. Shrug your shoulders up. Squeeze the upper arms towards each other. Beautiful. And then start to bow forward with the legs straight. Take your pelvis back. Good, stretching the arms back behind you. You can straighten the arms any amount. If you can lift them up and over, you can go for that. Just watch that you don't lock your elbows. Keep a little bend to the elbows so that you keep the stretch really happening in your shoulders and upper chest. Nice, Lena. Nice, Daniela. Beautiful, Ludmilla. Good. And then release those hands down to the floor. Nice job, you guys. Step yourself forward, top of your mat. Left foot comes alongside your right. Good, bend your knees, drop your seat into chair, walk your hands up onto your thighs and start to cat cow your spine. Good. Nice. So the story goes, of course, that Shiva, you know, the God of dissolving, the God of the cosmic dance, but he's also our representation of the perfect yogi, right? The one who can sit and meditate for eternity and not be disturbed by anything that goes on. Perfect meditator. So Kama gets involved in this plot to try and get Shiva to come out of his meditation so that he will marry Parvati so that he'll, you know, participate in the world and do his job. 
And of course, you know, Parvati is in love with Shiva. So she's like, okay, this might work. <laughs> and so they go through this with this whole plot where Kama is going to shoot Shiva with his arrow and he's going to open his eyes from his meditation and see Parvati and desire her. And, you know, that's, it, everything's just going to work out perfectly. And of course it doesn't, right? Kama shoots him with his arrow and Shiva does open his eyes, but he's annoyed, right? He's not, he's not fooled by what's going on. Come back to stillness, please. Stretch your arms up alongside your ears. Good, come up on the tippy toes of your feet. As you come up on the balls of your feet, drop your hips back more. Nice, good, nice Perry, nice Alana. Drop your heels back to the floor, please. Hands to the floor, straighten the legs and bow. Good, fingertips touching something, come up on the tippy toes of your feet, hands touching something, floor or blocks. Good. Nice, you guys, really scoop your belly, push your butt to the sky, drop your head, drop your heart. Beautiful, the up and the down happening at the same time. And then soften those heels back to the floor, please. Nice, and then step or jump yourself back to plank. Upward push up. Beautiful, lower down slow, coming through knees first if you need, all the way down to the belly. Good, pointing the toes back behind you, rise up cobra, lift head, neck and chest. Nice, Allison. Good, and then release back to your belly, please. Walk your hands a little wider off of your mat, so a wide-armed cobra come up on your fingertips and then lift up again, head, neck and chest with the arms wide, bringing those elbows forward. Good, and then let yourself begin to twist from side to side. So you lift your right rib cage a little higher and then release it and then left rib cage a little higher and then release it. Try to find the actual twist, you guys, so you're not just swaying from side to side, although that looks great too, but try and find where you actually sink into one side, lift the other rib cage up higher. Good. Nice, Lori, let your head go with you, perfect. Beautiful, and then come back to center again, pull those armpits back as your collarbones and your chest moves forward. Nice, and then release back to your belly, please. Plant the hands, press back downward facing dog. Good. Inhale the left leg up and back behind you, down dog split, reach out through that heel. Nice, and then step that foot forward between the hands, lunge. Both hands come inside the front foot, walk just a little bit to that upper right hand corner and then start to make big circles with that hip. Good. So in that moment when Shiva opens his eyes and he realizes what's going on, that he's been shot with an arrow of desire and being that perfect meditator, he's like, I'm not fooled by this. <laughs> I know what desire is and I know, right, where this is leading and it's nowhere good. I'm not following that. So in his irritation, because Shiva also gets pretty pissy a lot of the time, is he opens his third eye and he gazes at Kama through that third eye. And the third eye only sees the truth. So it burns away whatever is not real, burns away whatever is not true. And so Kama's physical form disintegrates, destroyed. Come back to center, please. Come back to stillness and then drop that back knee. Use a blanket underneath the knee if you'd like. Inhale both arms to the sky, Anjaneyasana. Good, so you're squeezing that front heel and that back knee towards each other so that there's this feeling that as you squeeze in, you can almost lift through your low belly. You can lift through your pelvis. So your pelvis is not just falling to the floor, but squeezing the legs, you actually feel like you're pulling up. So there's that feeling of the pelvis being heavy, the legs being heavy, but everything internal is drawing your spine long. Bring your hands to your heart center. Squeeze those outer elbows back. So again, you're engaging that openness of the chest by squeezing through the uh, armpit muscles of your shoulder blades. And then start to lift your spine taller and tilt your collarbones, tilt your sternum up towards the ceiling. So again, you're pulling as high as you can, like you're suspended by a string through the sternum. Pull up and keep squeezing those legs, navel in. So you're doing the back bend, but it's all from inside. And hug those armpits back and press your hands together. The more you press your hands together and pull back through the armpits, the more your upper chest and back are going to feel alive. Good. Come all the way back up, arms to the sky, reach. Good, so again, open through the armpits, through the chest, beautiful. And then release the hands down to the floor. Nice, Danielle, nice, Linda. Nice, you guys, lift that back knee. Step that right foot forward just a little bit. Take both legs to straight, Parsvottanasana. 
Good. So make sure your feet are not directly behind each other. So you have space right and left. Good. Nice on you. And then you're letting yourself bend your front knee. And as you bend the front knee, you can then send your outer right hip spinning forward, left low belly draws in and up. Good. And then start to pull your hips back to straighten the leg, pressing through the big toe mound of your foot. Good. So feel that for a moment and then let your knee bend again, drop into it, reset the, the pelvis and the left hip spinning back, right hip spinning forward, scoop your belly and then start to press the hips away from the floor, straight in that left leg. Good, and one more time, bending the knee. Good, pulling the left hip back, right hip spins forward, scoop your belly and straighten the leg and then drop into the forward fold. So your belly stays engaged, but you're relaxing the heart towards the front leg. Good, relaxing the head so that you could even do a little shake, yes and no. You can move your neck. Good. Nice, you guys. So of course, when Kama is destroyed, everybody freaks out, especially Kama's wife. And they say, we can't have this. The world can't exist without desire, without desire, without pleasure, without that feeling, nothing will work, right? Nothing will procreate, nothing will grow, nothing will do anything. Everything's just gonna wither and die. You have to do something. So Shiva, of course, says, all right, fine. So he restores Kama, but not his physical form. He comes back as this energetic energy, the invisible energy. And our metaphor for that, of course, is that he got a little bit of a spiritual upgrade. So that feeling of desire that was more rooted in pleasure and craving and attachment becomes the true understanding. What is it that I'm really seeking? Bring your hands to your hips, come all the way up to stand. Good. And that's one of our big questions in yoga, right? Who am I and what is it that I think that I'm seeking? Take your hands back behind you, interlace your fingers. Good. Shrug your shoulders up, squeeze the elbows towards each other. Again, engaging those armpit muscles. So you're not just pulling through your arms, but you're engaging those armpits, pull back. Good. And then bow forward, taking your pelvis back in space, stretch the arms up and over any amount, remembering that you are pulling up and wide through your left low belly, right hip spins forward. So your left rib cage should not be dropping towards the floor. Good, Alana. Nice, Perry. Beautiful, you guys. Nice, Laura. Nice, Lauren. And then release the hands down to the floor. Good. And then bend that front knee, step forward, top of your mat. Beautiful. Bend both knees, feet underneath the hips, drop your seat for chair. And then inhale the arms up alongside your ears. Beautiful. Good, staying low in chair, take your weight onto that left foot, please. And then bring your right knee up and cross your right thigh on top of your left. So transition into eagle. So the right thigh wraps all the way on top of the left and your outer shins push together. And then stretch the arms out wide. Left arm comes on top of right in front of your chest. Good, wrapping the forearms, nice Melody, nice Harriet. Good, and squeeze those armpits back. So even though you're pushing the forearms against each other, pull back so it feels like you're lifting your chest up and wide against the pressure of your forearms. Good. Crown of your head pulls up, drop those shoulders wide. Nice, you guys. One more breath, drop your hips, lift your chest, so stay vertical. Yeah. Beautiful, and then slowly release, come all the way up to stand, hug that right knee up in towards your chest. I know, you thought you were done. You're never done. <laughs> and then take that right leg back behind you into warrior three, take your chest forward. Good, hands at heart center, please. Nice, beautiful. And then start to bend that right knee, kick your heel in towards your butt. And just like an Anjaneyasana, start to lift your chest forward, heart forward and up, collarbones forward and up, like you're doing a back bend. Good, you're coming into dancer, but not reaching for that foot. Deep breath, lift your chest, lift your chest, lift your thigh, lift your thigh. Good, and then extend all the way back out, release the hands to the floor. <laughs> Good, step back downward facing dog. Yeah, and then drop to your knees, please, child's pose. Give yourself a moment to process the trauma of that sequence. <laughs> <laughs> Good, breathe deeply. Nice, you guys. 
So there's this connection to the heart chakra and your navel energy. So that the navel energy is the energy of how we live in the world. It's what we do, it's our actions. And it's our actions that are motivated from our sense of self, right? What do I need? What, do, what is it in me to do, right? What is my dharma? What is, it's the fulfillment of your desires, right? Going straight from the second chakra, which is that energy of creativity and pleasure and desire. Third chakra says, how do I get it? What do I do, right? So that energy is something that we have to give to the fulfillment of ourselves. Otherwise, our self-fulfillment is going to elude us. But when we're chasing just what's on the surface of our desires, then we stay in that rat race, right? We're always chasing something that's going to complete us. We're always chasing something that we think is going to make us feel the way we want to feel. So we go up one chakra higher to the heart that says, you have to recognize the reality behind your desires. What are you really seeking? Transform desire into something that frees you. And it frees you by understanding and then you have to give that willful energy of the navel, that self energy, you have to give yourself to it. You make an offering. And that energy of bliss gets energized. Or that flow of bliss gets energized. Walk yourself back up to hands and knees. Good. Downward facing dog. Beautiful. Start to walk your feet forward towards your hands. Come up on your tippy toes while you do it, though. So as you're coming forward, it's almost like you're walking yourself into a handstand prep. So stay on your hands as long as you can, up on your tippy toes as long as you can. Good. Press into those hands. Squeeze those armpits towards each other. And then walk your feet back to downward facing dog. Same way. So you're staying up on your tippy toes as much as you can. Good. So maybe only come as far forward as you can with your hands flat and don't worry about it. Walk your feet forward again, like you're bringing your shoulders over your hands, but stay up on your tippy toes. Keep pulling up through your low belly. Press into your hands and squeeze those armpits towards each other, towards the middle back. And then walk your feet back to downward facing dog. Yeah, it doesn't matter how far forward you can come. It's just an exercise, right? One more time, start to walk yourself forward. Hips go nice and high up on your tippy toes. Pull up through your low belly. Pull up through your ribs. Press into your hands. Good. And then walk your feet all the way forward underneath your hips, standing forward fold, bend your knees, drop your belly onto your thighs and wrap your arms around the backs of your legs. Good, drop your head. Nice, Emily, thank you. Push those inner knees just a little bit wider, press through the big toe mounds of your feet, scoop your belly and then push your butt to the sky, stay hugged in. And as you push your butt to the sky and press down through your heels, that becomes your forward fold, realistic, right? Stay hugged in. Relax your shoulders. Yeah, nice, you guys. And then release the hands down to the floor, please. Take your hands to your hips, come all the way up to stand. Good, arms to the sky. Deep breath in. And then from this position, bend your knees, drop back into chair. See if you feel a little lighter coming into chair from standing instead of coming from up from the ground. Good, and then weight comes onto your right foot still in chair, hover that left foot up off the floor and then cross that left thigh on top of your right, eagle pose on the other side. So the thighs are stacked and the shins are pressing against each other. Arms go wide, right arm crosses on top of left in front of your chest, press the forearms against each other, same way the legs are wrapping. Good, hand draw your left hip back in space a little bit more, there you go. Nice, you guys. Stay vertical as much as you can. So you're pulling your ribs in, your low belly in. You have that energy of everything internal pulling up and then drop those hips lower, bend your knees deeper. So you have that downward flow and that upward flow, same time. Good, hug your armpits back. Nice, Meredith. Good, Teresa, left hip spins back in space. Nice, Heidi. Beautiful, Allison. Nice, Danielle. Good, now slowly come on out, bring that left knee up and towards your chest. You can stretch the arms out and then take your left leg back behind you, come into warrior three, take your chest forward, hands at heart center. Good, so find the warrior three, back thighs gotta be really strong. And then bend that left knee, kick your heel in towards your butt and start to lift your chest forward and up into that dancer pose without reaching for your foot. So it's all just your spine, collarbones up, sternum up. Yeah, navel in, press that thigh higher. 
Nice, Andra. Nice, Marjorie. Good. And then lean forward back to warrior three. I know you want to just come up onto your feet and then release your hands down to the floor, please. Beautiful. Nice, Mark. Step back to lunge and come back downward facing dog. Good. Throw a handstand in there. Love it. Deep breath in. Slide forward to plank pose, upward push up. Lower down slow, coming through knees first if you need. Ooh, nice, Allison. Right into chaturanga, beautiful. Awesome. I love that I mentioned the word handstand and then a bunch of you start handstanding. I love it. Onto your belly, please. Stretch your arms reaching back towards your feet. Good, palms facing down. Press through the front of your pelvis and draw your low belly in. So those pelvic bones are drawing forward and up, but your navel's drawing in, your ribs are drawing in. And then lift your legs up off of the floor. Fingertips still on the floor, lift head, neck, and chest. Good. So you're using that pressure on the floor to feel the lift of your chest and pull those armpits up and towards the center of your back. Good. Now float your arms up without losing that sensation. Good. And then bend your knees, kick your heels, and do not reach for your feet, but lift your arms higher as though you're going to reach for your feet. Good. So you're in bow pose, but you're not reaching for the ankles. Lift the thighs up, lift your heart up, arms up, but don't reach for your feet. Good. One more breath. Pull those collarbones, that sternum forward and up. Beautiful. And then release back to your belly. Nice job, you guys. Make a pillow with your hands. Rest for a moment. Sounds like skydiving skydiving position there you go skydiving in the blue sky that's meditation breathe into the back of your heart into the back of the belly good so our challenge is that we see desire and we see the desire for love, right? Because that's what it is. What we do on the outside is not always a direct connection to that loving experience. Sometimes it's the desire for love that drives us to do what we do. Desire to feel a certain way. And when that's what we're chasing, we get confused, we get disturbed. So that space of the heart chakra is where we go to to find where everything is already unified. And right beneath that is the energy that says the bliss, the experience of already knowing yourself to be loved unconditionally is there. And the ability to extend love unconditionally comes from there too. We have to energize it. We have to give something to it. We have to give the energy that has been promised to chasing desires on the outside. We have to give that energy to the fulfillment of desires on the inside. Right? Cupid gets that spiritual overhaul. So that we're no longer doing things on a surface level, assuming that it's going to make us feel a certain way, but we're doing what is a full extension of what already feels fulfilling. And our challenge with those inner desires is that we often can't even name them because we haven't looked. And it's not that we don't have the time or the energy to fulfill them, but we just don't include them in our day. We don't include them in the process of our life. So the Ananda Kanda, the roots of bliss, energize them, give something to the deepest desires of your heart. Good. Slowly flip over onto your back, please. <laughs> It's not a trick, just come onto your back. <laughs> it's funny, some of you looked at the camera like you couldn't quite believe that I said that. Flip onto your back. Good, cross your right ankle on top of your left thigh, please. Lift your left shin parallel to the floor. Good, reach through to hold that left thigh if you'd like, or just let the legs do the work and let your hands relax. Do relax your shoulders, whatever position you're in. Good. Nice, you guys. Finding the little scoop of the low belly. So even though your legs are being drawn in towards your chest or in towards your belly, press down through the lowest place of your spine. So you're trying to find as much of your sacrum on the floor as you can. So there's that 
fold that happens through the left thigh crease. You gotta just flex your foot a little bit more, Kira. There you go. Yep, both feet, you got it. Beautiful, you guys. Nice, and one more breath. Good. And then pull that right knee in towards your chest, please. Extend your left leg straight down to the floor. Good, and then holding behind the right thigh, extend your right heel up towards the ceiling. So you're unwrapping that figure four. So the right knee is in towards your chest, left leg is straight out on the floor. You got it. Hold behind your right thigh, extend your heel up towards the ceiling. Good. Press down through your left heel. That's the leg that's on the floor. Beautiful. Good, and then keep the leg where it is, right leg where it is, stretch your arms up alongside your ears. Yep. Interlace your fingers, press out through the heels of your hands above the crown of your head. So still reaching your hands to the floor. So baby fingers, pinky fingers reaching for the floor. Good, so this is so you, that you can feel the openness, the wideness of your upper back and chest. Press down through the top of that left thigh and navel in, try and pull that right thigh towards your belly more. Good, and press out through both heels. Nice, so Lauren, really reach out through the heel. Good, doesn't matter how deep the stretch is, just move uh, as much through the heel as you can. Awesome, you guys. Deep breath in. As you exhale, curl through your spine, reach those arms up to reach for your right toes. So like a little abdominal crunch, reach up for your right toes. Good, you don't have to still have the fingers interlaced. Good, and then whatever part of your leg you can reach here, go ahead and reach for it, ankle, calf, thigh again. And then as you relax the shoulders back to the floor, bring the leg with you. Keep pressing through your left thigh. So a little deeper hamstring stretch. Good. Nice, just flex that right foot, Daniela. There you go. Good, and then bend that right knee back in towards your chest, please. Bring it across your body over to the left, spinal twist. Good. Arms can go wide if you'd like. And then the option is to bend your left knee. That's the leg that's extended out beneath you. Bend that knee, kick your heel in and reach back with the right hand for the foot or the ankle. So you're taking the quad stretch in the twist. Good. And relaxing again through the wideness of your chest. Beautiful. And breathing deeply. My desire when we misunderstand it has the power to keep us trapped. And that's what it does. If we're just chasing things on a surface level, we don't even know what we're asking for. When we do that inner inquiry, right? We find that inner place of knowing what it is that we're seeking. And desire has the ability to set you free because you turn your energy to the fulfillment of those deep desires and not the surface level. A feeling of coming back to an unconditioned reality of yourself. That's the heart chakra, unstruck unconditioned. Good, slowly release that uh, right leg if you have it in the quad stretch. Then release the twist, bringing the right knee back in towards your chest, squeeze. Beautiful. And then place that right foot down to the floor, knee bent, step, step, blah, blah, blah. left ankle comes on top of right thigh. Good, lift your right shin parallel to the floor, reach through to hold. Good, or not, you don't have to reach through to hold. If it feels better to let the arms relax, let the legs do the work, let the legs do the work. Make sure that your shoulders can remain relaxed, flexing both feet. Good. Bring a little bit more weight, everybody, onto that right side of your sacrum. There you go, Rhonda. Nice, you guys. Good, so wherever there is a desire, and I know again, we have this experience of the world right now where the ability to connect with people in the way that we normally would, even something as simple as giving people chocolates or Valentines or a hug feels like it's not as accessible. So even more, the idea is to not feel that that's 
that uh, desire to give affection or to give love is stunted, but instead you find another way around. You find the inner way to extend mm -hmm. that love. So you remain fulfilled, right? Nothing is kept from you. Go ahead, feel that low place of your back, your low place of your sacrum rooting down to the floor. Nice. Good, and then bring that left knee in towards your chest, please. Stretch your right leg down to the floor. Good, hold behind your left thigh and then extend that left heel up towards the ceiling. So take the hamstring stretch. Pressing your thigh back against your hands. Again, try and find the lowest part of your sacrum rooting down to the floor. Keep your chest open. Good, back of the head is gently pressing into the floor. So again, there's a feeling of the head being connected to the upper back and there being a rooting of the tops of the shoulders down. Good. Nice, you guys. And then keep the leg where it is. Right leg is extended, root down through that right thigh as well. Take your arms up overhead. Good, so your hands are reaching for the floor up above uh, crown of your head. Interlace your fingers if you'd like, push out through the heels of the hands. So your baby fingers are going to be pressing into the floor. And again, you're finding the wideness of your chest root down through the top of your right thigh. And from just your belly, just your legs, pull that left thigh towards your chest more. And then extend out through that heel. Good. Really good, you guys. Nice, Daniela. Nice, Perry. Nice, Ludmilla. I know, it should feel like a lot of work. And then deep breath in, as you exhale, lift the shoulders, reach your hands towards that left, towards those left toes, come as high as you can. Even if you can't reach the toes, lift up. Good. And then whatever part of your leg you can reach, reach for it. And then as you relax the shoulders back to the floor, bring the leg with you into that little bit of a deeper hamstring stretch, a little bit more of a split. Keep that right thigh rooting down, flex those feet. Yeah. Nice, you guys. Good, Mia. Nice, Lauren, stretch out through that heel. Beautiful, and then bend that left knee back in towards your chest, please. Nice job. Come into spinal twist, taking the left knee across your body. You got it. Arms can go wide. The shoulder is super high up off the ground and you want that left arm to go up over your head instead. That can feel very nice. Nice stretch for the side body. And then the option is to take the quad stretch as well. So the right leg that's extended towards the bottom of your mat, bend the knee, kick the heel and reach back left hand for the foot or the ankle. Good, and chest is wide. Nice. So all of those opposing energies, right? I love the image of Shiva being the perfect meditator who's not impressed by the external form of desire, but internally what happens in that story is that he goes back to his meditation and everybody thinks that the whole romantic scheme has failed. And Parvati says, forget it. You know, I'm not going to try this way anymore. I'm just going to go and I'm going to be the best version of me I can be. She goes and she starts practicing for herself. She says, I want to be an equal to Shiva. I want to be an equal to what it is that I already feel drawn to, that I already feel that unconditional love for. I want to be that. And so she practices and brighter and brighter. Shiva notices it even in meditation. He says, what is that? I have to know who that is. And he comes to her. So it's that not purification, but it's that refinement of what it is that we're really seeking and the decision that you can take the energy that is yours and you can give it to that self-fulfillment. You don't have to give it away and hope that someone else will help you feel the way you want to feel. It's the practice of yoga. What is it that I truly desire? And can I give my energy to that fulfillment, to the bliss that is already mine? I recognize my unconditioned state. And then from there, all desire is already fulfilled. Release that quad stretch, please, if you're holding it. And then release the twist, bringing yourself back to center, left knee hugs in towards your chest. Good, squeeze the, the right knee in as well, both knees in. Beautiful. Hugging the knees, roll forward and back on your spine. Beautiful. 
come up to balance just because it's fun. Hop on your sit bones, find boat pose for a moment. Stretch your arms up alongside your ears. Yep, reach up. Nice, Rhonda. Good, Teresa. Squeeze those armpits towards each other. So wherever your arms are, squeeze your armpits back so your chest lifts. Yeah, beautiful, Laura. Nice, Mia. Nice, Kira. Nice, Jessica. Good. And then hug those knees in towards your chest, please. Beautiful. Turn yourself over onto hands and knees so you're facing the front of your mat again. Come back to downward facing dog. Good. And then right leg comes up and back behind you, please. Down dog split. Beautiful. Bring that knee forward and wide for pigeon. Right knee towards your right wrist. Good. Sending that outer left hip spinning forward, right low belly goes up and wide. You've heard me say that before, I think. Good. And then go ahead and walk yourself forward, please. Find your resting position on the forearms, on the elbows, blocks. Might be a little fun for you here as an arm option is to come up onto the uh, more of the tips of your elbows or of the, of the upper arms and bring the hands into prayer overhead. So you can even do this with your elbows on blocks if you'd like. So it gives you a little bit more of a potential stretch through the upper arms and through the armpits. Good, nice. So I would even take your elbows a little bit forward more, Perry. Yeah, so that there's, yeah, so you have more negative space there. Yeah, how's that feel? You might even put your forehead on a block that might feel better. And then you can really walk your elbows forward. There you go. How's that feel? Okay. Yeah. Beautiful, you guys. The idea if you have your hands in that prayer position overhead is that the elbows, the further forward that they walk, right? So the more you have that feeling of extension through the arms, it's going to stretch deeper. So you got to take your elbows forward far enough so that you really feel that there is a opening there. But so Harriet, you need to be more on the tips of your elbows. Your elbows are a little too wide. Good, unless you feel good. You know, if you guys are in a position and it feels good and I'm trying to talk you into something else, just ignore me. <laughs> it's also part of our practice, right? You're doing what's good for you and the world tries to talk you into something else, ignore it, right? power of Shiva to be undisturbed. Good. Take one more breath where you are and walk yourself back up onto your fingertips or onto blocks, your choice. So you're still in pigeon, but you're walking yourself up. If you are someone who does pigeon on your back, come up into Anjaneyasana, so come up off of your back and step the right foot forward into Anjaneyasana. Good, and then reaching for the quad stretch here, bend your back knee. Good, draw that heel in towards your butt, reach back either hand, or really fun, if you can reach back for both, take your quad stretch, either twisting or regular. If you can do both hands, reach for both. Good, and if reaching for the foot makes no sense at all, you can still bend the knee, bring your hands to your heart center if you can, and just lift up into that back bend with no hands like you did before. Good, try and keep your sit bones rooting down to the floor so you don't lose the feeling of pigeon. Nice, beautiful, you guys, beautiful, Lauren. Heart high, nice, Allison. Good, Jessica, nice, Anne. Deep breath. Good, Diane. Nice, Linda. And then slowly release, please. Both hands find the floor. Lift that back knee up. Good, and then step your right foot between the hands, please. Lunge if you're not there already. Yep, so you gotta press into your hands, step your right foot forward. There you go, step your left foot in just a little bit, take both legs to straight, Parsvottanasana. Good, so both legs are straight, toes facing straight ahead. Again, make sure your feet are not directly behind each other. Nice. Beautiful. And then bend that right knee, please walk your hands forward, step up, standing split, left thigh comes parallel to the floor. Good. Left hand stays on the floor, right arm comes to the sky, revolved Ardha Chandrasana. And then optional, bend your back knee, kick your heel and reach back for the foot or the ankle. 
So all this back bending, right, with the quad stretch is that your pelvis and your ribs have to be doing work together. They can't be doing two different things, otherwise it won't work. <laughs> Chest high. Nice, Andra. Good. Nice, Marjorie. And then slowly extend all the way back. Nice, Teresa. Beautiful. Good, you guys. And then step back to lunge, please. Come back downward facing dog. Good. Vinyasa, if you're crazy. Child pose if you're not. Just kidding. If you want the vinyasa, slide forward to plank. If you're happier in child's pose, take a little rest. If you're doing the vinyasa from plank, lower down to your belly, rise up cobra or even that locust pose again with the arms reaching back and then come back to downward facing dog. Beautiful, Marla. Good. And then we're coming into pigeon on the other side. So left leg comes up and back behind you, down dog split. Good, bring that knee forward and wide towards your left wrist, sliding that right leg back. Good. Nice, you guys, front foot stays awake. So make sure that you are pushing through that front shin and then walk your hands forward, please. Come to rest on your elbows. Again, if you want that variation on the tips of your elbows with the hands up above, that gives a little bit of a different stretch through the upper arms. Again, you can always do that with your elbow tips on blocks as well to give yourself a little bit more extension. Good. And if there's a different arm position that serves you better, do that. Nice, you guys. Making a wish for yourself. And a wish not as something that, you know, you think of as a fantasy that maybe it'll come true. I think we often do that. We say a wish is something that's just not possible. But you're actually delving deep into that inner world, the inner place where you already know what it is that you're seeking that is your fulfillment. Right? What is required for you to understand or to feel for you to unconditionally feel that flow of love that is universal, but it's also you, it's for you. So that second chakra, that desire space or that space for pleasure is that you can tap into, tune into that unconditional flow for you. that it's felt as a real thing. It's felt as an actual experience embodied. Can you practice giving it to yourself first? I recognize that inner flow of unconditional love for me. And from there, I can gift it back to the rest of the world. But if I try and chase it from the outside, I might chase for a long time, stay disturbed. Nice, you guys. Walk yourself back up onto your fingertips, please. If you are on your back, come into Anjaneyasana, left foot forward. Good. And then bending your back knee, take your heel in any version of the quad stretch. So you can reach back with the opposite hand to take it into a twist. You can reach back same hand, same foot for a uh, straight quad stretch. You can reach back with both hands and really dig that back thigh down and forward. Nice, Lori. Nice, Heidi. Good, Sarah. Nice, Diane. Awesome, you guys. Chest up. Don't look miserable here. Nice, Anju. <laughs> Good smiles. Thank you. Good. One more breath. Awesome. Really good, Lauren. And then slowly release. Please bring the hands back to the floor, back foot to the floor, and then press into the hands, press into that back foot, lift the back knee and step your left foot between the hands. So you got to engage that belly a little bit. That's it. Nice. Then right foot steps forward just a little bit. Take both legs to straight. Pars Votanasana. I know these are your last standing poses, so don't give up on them. Good. Again, finding that feeling of the outer right hip spinning forward, left hip drawing back so you have that really long line on your front thigh. Nice. And then bend the left knee, walk your hands forward, step up to standing split. 
You got it. Right hand stays on the floor, left hand reaches up either to your lower back or up to the sky. Take the twist, twisting Ardha Chandrasana. Then the option is to bend that right knee, kick your heel in, reach back for the foot or the ankle. Or again, you can kick the heel in, keep your hand at your lower back and just lift the chest up and open. Again, this is your pose to mess around it and find the connection between your pelvis and your chest. Beautiful, nice Mark, nice Mia. Good Emily. And then extend all the way back out, please. Release the hands to the floor. Good, step back to lunge, back to downward facing dog. Good, drop into child's pose for a moment. Love it, throw another handstand in, why not? Really good, awesome, Allison. Nice, Alana. Good, child's pose for everybody who's not throwing random handstands around. Deep breath into the back of your heart. Deep breath into that lower place of the belly where there are the desires on the outside and then there's the deeper desires from the inside. And for a moment, can you feel yourself just extending that unconditional love through those invisible roots that extend to every corner of yourself? Good. And then slowly release, come on out, please. Find your way back onto your backs. Stretch your legs up to the sky. Good, stretch your arms up to the sky. <laughs> Jessica's doing a lot of shaking. That's kind of nice. If you want to wiggle, go ahead and shake your sillies out. Good, nice. <laughs> Good job, you guys. And then find where your heels are in line with your hips. Your arms are in line with your shoulders and then draw those arm bones down into the shoulder sockets. So you pull down to feel the chest lift and you press down from your heels all the way into your hips so your low back roots to the floor. Good, and then you stretch out through your heels. Nice, and then deep breath in. As you exhale, lift your shoulders, reach up for your feet or in the direction of your feet. Doesn't matter if you reach them or not. Good, so don't bring your feet closer to your hands. Keep your feet where they are. <laughs> Make your upper body go to your hands. There you go. Good, and then slowly release the chest back down, shoulders back down. Bring your feet back to the floor, please. You can either keep your feet flat, so drop the feet to the floor. You can keep your feet flat with your knees bent or extend your legs out to straight for fish pose. So your choice, you can do it with the knees bent or the legs straight. You may either keep your arms, bring your arms into robot arms, the upper arms press into the floor, fingers up towards the ceiling, or you can extend the arms to straight, palms flat to the floor, and move those hands just underneath your sit bones or just underneath your butts. So you're squeezing the arms close to your side ribs. So those are two options there. Good. And then either way, you're pressing down through your seat. Start to engage again those armpit muscles behind the heart. Lift the chest, start to arch the spine and then lifting the throat open, drop the top of the head to the floor. Good, but press into your legs, press into your seat. If your arms are straight, you can press into the forearms and bend the elbows. If your elbows are on the floor in robot arms, press into the upper arms. Your heart does not lift on its own. Those muscles of the back support it. Good. Beautiful, you guys. One more breath, lifting through the chest, rooting down through your seat, upward flow, downward flow. And then slowly release everything. Beautiful, take a moment. And then bending your knees, planting your feet. Let your knees rock from side to side like windshield wipers. You can separate the feet nice and wide if you'd like while you do that. Good. Let the knees drop to the right and pause there, stay, arms wide. You can look to the left if you'd like. Good. 
Good, and then bring the knees back up to center, please. Drop the knees to the left, pause. Looking to the right if you choose. And then come on back up to center, please. Squeeze those knees in towards your chest. Hug, bring your forehead up to meet your knees. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Good. Final pose to release anything that is ready to be free. And then unwind, please. If you want another spinal twist, you're welcome to take it. Otherwise, begin to find your way into Shavasana, stretching the legs out wide, out straight. They can be wide. Arms alongside you, palms facing up. I'm going to play for you verses from one of the chants to the Devi, the mother the goddess. Most of you probably remember this song. <laughs> can someone on Zoom tell me if you can hear this? Just give me a thumbs up. Oh, 
Get nice and deep, letting the body stretch and move. As you're ready, draw your knees in towards your chest and roll to your right side. For those of you who remember that song, love that song. You're welcome, my Valentine to you. Bring yourself slowly back up to sit if you've never heard that song before, Krishna Das. Bring the hands together in front of the heart center, palm to palm. I played it for you on purpose because the remembrance this is the heart that is unstruck, right? No beginning, no end. It is the unconditioned state and the heart never forgets. The heart never forgets that it comes from that infinite love. 
and it never forgets that what's running through you at all times is infinite love. And it's only that we look on the outside to see that love reflected back to us. And when it doesn't happen the way we think, we get disappointed, we get disturbed. So we're asked to go back to that place of your own inner heart, your own inner awareness, your own inner knowledge that that love has never been held from you. It's unconditioned, it's yours. So you go back to that place that says, I wish to know what it is to feel love. And yes, I want others to show me, I want them to be a part of it with me, but I can feel it on my own as myself because it's mine. It's already mine. So you go to that wish fulfilling tree and you make that wish, whatever form it comes out of you and you make an offering. Because what are you willing to give to have that experience? What are you willing to surrender to have that feeling of the unconditional love that is already yours, unobstructed? The heart never forgets. And close the sound of Om, deep breath in. Sliding the thumbs up to the space between the eyebrows. Namaste, everybody. Thank you guys so, so much. Have a great rest of your day. Happy Valentine's Day. Do something beautiful and fun and loving for you. Then you can go hug and kiss and, you know, throw chocolate at somebody else. <laughs> go